Hello everyone, welcome to Media Nama. Recently, the Indian government approved changes to the country's foreign direct investment policy, allowing for 100% FDI in the space sector. Simply put, the, the amendment is intended to increase investment in Indian space uh, companies. It is expected that increased private sector uh, participation would help generate employment, enable modern technology absorption, and make the sector self-reliant. Additionally, the government is also looking to integrate Indian companies into global value chains. We have with us Media Nama journalist Kamya Pandey, who will tell us more about the government's new FDI policy and how it's linked to the growing interest of foreign companies in providing satellite communication services in India. Hi, Kamya. Uh, so how exactly has the government liberalized the FDI policy? Could you give us a bit of a comparison between the current and the new policy to begin with? Yeah, so as you've already mentioned, there's 100% foreign direct investment, which is now allowed in space sector. But I think what's worth noting is the difference between uh, how you can make investments in this sector. So for a quick refresher, the foreign direct so investment foreign policy investment of 2020 uh, provided for two routes which can be used to make investments. One is the government approval route. And this is for everyone. This is, this is, not, just this is not just specific to space sector. There's two routes to make investments. Um, so the government approval route uh, means that any company trying to enter India would have to... Uh, Essentially, the government would have a say in whether you can or cannot make an investment in India. The other route is an automatic route. Here, you can make just make investments without any need for government approval. So, prior to liberalized policy, investments in the establishment and operation of satellites could be only done through the government route. So, anybody trying to do that would essentially have to go to the government. Now, what they've done is they've put out specific percentages up to which investments can be made under the automatic route. Uh, of course, you mm -hmm. can look at specifics on our website, but uh, just as an example, up to 74% of investment in the satellite manufacturing and operation space can now be done through the automatic route. The rest, however, still has to go through the government route. There's specific uh, subcategories for which yeah. different figures have been provided. So there's 74 and then there's, uh, there's up to 100% uh, provision for uh, automatic route investments for other categories. This was meant to, uh, this was, this would mean that uh, international companies, even like SATCOM companies, um, would not necessarily have to have government approval if their investments fall within the newly created thresholds. So threshold for the specific category, if they fall under it, then you wouldn't necessarily have to ask the government. It's a great thing for uh, satellite communication services, which is as it is an area that the government is trying to promote. Right. Right. So um, how does this really affect investment in satellite communication services? Satellite communication is something that the government has already been actively trying to promote. We've seen it uh, in other regulations as well. For instance, uh, the Telecom Act that allowed for administrative allocation of spectrum, which uh, was something that the international companies had been buying for. Essentially, it allowed them to uh, you know, not go through the process of auctioning. Uh, this is, again, a step towards the same direction because of the changed FDI rules, companies like Amazon, Starlink, or even Apple Statcom partner, Global Star, can enter the market with greater ease. Although I'd say there's still problems that they could potentially face, uh, albeit not related to how much investment they can make, but there are specific parts of the FDI policy that still prove to be a challenge. And um, like, what are these challenges specifically, especially for companies like uh, Starlink and Amazon, which are applying for satellite communication license in India? Yeah, so um, before, to look at the potential impact of the, these challenges, I think we should look at a very specific example, Starlink. So there have been a lot of reports around Starlink saying that it's experiencing delays in getting approval to provide SATCOM services in India because... Uh, it has been asked to disclose whether any of its shareholders share oh, land share border with it. This mm. is a part of the uh, 2020 FDI policy, which requires that any investors in land border sharing countries would only be allowed to use the government route to invest in So Starlink has been unwilling to share this information because it's a private company and as such, it is not it supposed is not to share um, shareholder details so prior to becoming public it's not supposed to do that 
so instead, it has agreed to submit a declaration stating that none of its shareholders uh, share a border with India. The government has, however, been hesitant to accept this declaration because previously a company called Verizon, which is a, another uh, another telecom company in the U.S., it submitted a similar declaration. But the government later found that some of its shareholding was from Pakistan, Bangladesh, and Hong Kong. So effectively, that's like um, weakened their trust in uh, you know something like a declaration. Although I'm assuming that they'd still um, go the the provision that Starlink's that Starlink would still get permission because uh, recent reports say that uh, the DPIIT has. Uh, spoken up in favor of accepting um, declarations like this. But mm -hmm. given that uh, sharehold this shareholding information falls under uh, general conditions under the FDI policy, this is a general condition for anybody um, you know seeking to become uh, an investor in India, any foreign company. Mm -hmm. This would still be valid even under the liberalized policy for the space sector. Which tells us again, essentially, like what I was trying, what was I was alluding to, that there is plenty of roadblocks for foreign investors in the space. Will entry of foreign players in the satellite communication space hurt uh, Indian companies in any way? So not really. I mean, it might. Uh, instead of hurting Indian companies, I think we should actually look at this in the perspective of what it'll do for what customers. Do. Mm -hmm. So this would you know, increased competition in the market as it is what we've been seeing is that just two players, uh, Airtel and Geo, which incidentally are also trying to, you know, have the first mover's advantage in the satcom space. Are, mm -hmm. Like, they're essentially a duopoly in the telecom sector in India. So the entry of foreign players would rather benefit customers. More so, I don't know whether we should see it as competition because, uh, Satellite communication doesn't necessarily provide the same kind of services that traditional telecom does. So, satellite communication is meant for areas that don't that that are harder to set up uh, terrestrial links in. So, where mm -hmm. la laying cables is harder, that's where you provide mm -hmm. sat satcom services. Mm -hmm. so, uh, in that sense, it's not really competition. It's just a new avenue, and within the new avenue, I think having more players would lead to uh, you know, lower prices for customers. So it's more beneficial than anything else. Of course, right. uh, these players would probably not want to see competition uh, hmm. given that they've been used to not having any for a long time. But for hmm. customers, it's really beneficial. That's an interesting perspective. Okay. Uh, thanks, Kamya, for sharing your insights. For our viewers, if you're interested in following tech news and developments, check out our website, medianama.com and follow our YouTube channel for similar explainers. Thank you.